It is um, my great pleasure to announce today's speaker. Some of you um, do know him. And it is Larry Jennings, who has been a longtime fellowship member and also a pastor. And I personally know him to be an extraordinarily kind and caring soul. He has great depth of soul. And his ministry on the planet is a very special one. He is, what is your official title, Larry? A funeral he is a funeral <laughs> director. And I really, I, I remember times Larry has come and given a talk and, and told us about several incidents um, in which he has ministered uh, to people uh, during that particular challenging time in his life. And I'm here to tell you he did it twice for my family. And um, it was very, very special. Larry has a gift and it is the gift of love. Larry said he's going to talk about Christmas today, so let's welcome him. I thought I'd change it up a little this time. My talk last time was entitled, A View from a Hearse. <laughs> well, this time I thought we'd spend some time talking about Christmas and this beautiful season that we're in. Um, last night was special. Um, you can see several of my granddaughters are here tonight, today with me, and they spent the night with us. Um, we had popcorn, we watched a movie, which I think two out of three of them fell asleep to a nightmare before Christmas. What else would I watch at my house for Christmas? <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we had a great time preparing for Christmas, and uh, tonight's talk is about that. Um, all of my talks have a beginning somewhere, which all of us have. And I'd like to share how this one began. Sharon, my wife, oh dear. Um, we both love Disney, and we are passionate about the experiences we have had there. I would say without reservation that Christmas is our favorite time of year to visit that beautiful park. The decorations, the music, the parades, the shows, and walking through Epcot Center. I wore my Epcot shirt today. I've got my Mickey Mouse on here. <laughs> and thanks to Juliana, who was making uh, pancakes this morning, I had a Mickey Mouse pancake, too. <laughs> <laughs> but as you, walk, as you walk through Epcot and you're visiting each country, you, you learn how these countries celebrate Christmas. And for me, the main component keeps coming back about Disney and why I collect Disney, which my wife says sometimes I'm a little uh, overwhelmed with and overwhelm the house with all the things I bring in. Um, but for me, it's simple. Disney is magic. It awakens the inner child in me. And there's no adults visiting this beautiful place, just trail children. Children waiting to believe in something magical. And as I look around this room today, I feel the magic that is present with us in this room. The magic is love and reminds me of who the Creator is. The Creator is love. And He is present with us as we celebrate the Christmas season and the birth of Master Jesus. Each year we celebrate this wonderful holiday, and today, as you sit back in your seats, I would like us together to explore how we and others celebrate this time of year. I want to share with you this morning some thoughts that I have had, some observations that I have had, but especially I want to share with you Christmas as I view this holiday through the eyes of children. I'd like you to just to sit back in your chairs for a moment, relax, 
and imagine again that you are five years old. Go ahead, don't be bashful. Close your eyes and take three deep breaths and travel with me. Your parents have tucked you into bed and are reading you a book. You can hear the words, "'Twas the night before Christmas, and all through the house not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. Your eyes begin to close as the story continues, and you soon find yourself drifting off to sleep as the warmth of the blankets comfort you. It's now Epiphany Eve in a small village in Italy, and you are lying in bed, your head on a pillow as you try to sleep. A smile is on your face, and joy is in your heart as you wait and listen for an old, tattered, and soot-covered witch named Belfena to visit. Belfena is flying around the world this night on her broomstick and will come down the chimney to deliver candy and presents because she knows that you have been good this year. Perhaps you may have fallen a little short of model behavior, and if that's the case, Alfano will leave lumps of coal. Although realizing that no one can be perfect for a whole year, she often leaves a sweet lump of coal made from black sugar. Alfana has been an Italian tradition since the 13th century and came from a Christian legend rather than popular culture. The story is that Alfana was approached by the three wise men who asked her to lead them to a stable where the baby Jesus lay in a manger. She was too busy cleaning her house at the time, so she declined the offer to go with them. Very soon she realized that she had made a huge mistake. So she gathered up a bag full of gifts and set off alone in search of the baby Jesus. Although she followed the same stars as the wise men, leading them to the Magi, she was unable to find the stable that night. But undaunted, Balfano continues to travel around this world even to this day, searching every house for the Christ child. As she enters each house through the chimney, she goes to each bed, to the bed of each child and peers into their face, hoping to find the one, the Christ, that she has been searching for for so, so long. She is overwhelmed by the beauty that she sees as she peers into the face of each child, and she reaches into their bed and gives each of them a gift. She then silently leaves the way she came to search the next house for the Christ. On the first day of Epiphany this year, Italian children will hold their breath as they awaken to search their stockings for a sign that they have been good this year. They will also celebrate the arrival of this special witch with a traditional Italian food and a Christmas cake. This marks the end of the long and festive holiday season in Italy. On Christmas morning, not unlike here, the Italian children will be celebrating Christmas morning as Babbo Natel, dressed in his red suit, will leave gifts under the tree. They will then attend church service with their family and have a wonderful meal. This moment in time is special, but pales in comparison to the arrival of an old witch still searching each home for the Christ child. Now again, let's close our eyes as we journey to Mexico where Christmas is celebrated from December 12th to January 6th. Tonight is December 16th and you are eight years old. You have a candle in one hand and in the other hand you're carrying a board. Placed on that board are painted figures of Mary riding a donkey 
and Joseph leading them were walking down the street of your village and stop at a neighbor's house to sing a song. The song you are singing is asking for a room for Mary and Joseph to sleep. You are told there's no room in the house and that you must go away. Each house is decorated on the outside with evergreens, moss, and paper lanterns. There are nine of them that you will visit. Eventually, one of the nine houses will open and you are invited in where prayers of thanks will be said and there will be a party with food, games, and fireworks. Each night, a different house hosts the Posada party. At the final Posada on Christmas Eve, a manger and, a, and figures of shepherds are put on the board you are carrying. When the Posada house has been found, a baby Jesus is put into the manger. And then families go to a midnight church service. After the service, there are more fireworks to celebrate the start of Christmas. Now we move on to January 6, the day of Epiphany, which they call the day of three kings. The children will receive their gifts from the three kings on the way they awaken in the morning. It's traditional to eat a special cake called the Three Kings Cake. A figure of baby Jesus is hidden inside this cake, and whoever has the baby Jesus in their piece of cake is the godparent of Jesus for that year. A very special moment for them. It always has amazed me to watch children and how they view this world and events through their eyes of innocence. Soon here in our own neighborhoods, our children will be tucked into their beds. They will believe with all their hearts and souls when they awaken that they can climb out of bed, race to the Christmas tree, and there will be gifts there left by Santa. The cookies and milk that they left out for the wonderful reindeer and for Santa and the carrots will all have disappeared. They may even remember hearing sleigh bells from the reindeer's harness. They don't question if this is going to happen. They just know. Let's take a moment to know how our traditions began. In the fourth century AD, there was a bishop who lived in a place called Myra in Asia Minor, which is now called Turkey. He was a very young and rich man. His parents had died and left him a great amount of wealth. He was also a very kind man and was well known for helping those that were poor and those that were in need. This man would become Saint Nicholas. There are many legends about him. Probably the most well-known story tells the story about how the custom of hanging Christmas stockings began. It goes like this. There was a poor man who had three daughters. He was so poor that he could not give a dowry to his daughters, so they could not be married. One night, St. Nicholas secretly dropped a bag of gold down the chimney into the house which would allow the oldest daughter to be married. The gold fell into a stocking that had been hung by the fire to dry. Later the same act would be repeated so the father's second daughter could be married. The father determined to discover the person who was giving him these wonderful gifts stayed up late one night and he stayed by the fire until he caught Nicholas dropping yet another bag of gold. Nicholas begged the man not to tell anyone, but to no avail, the news got out. And from then on, when someone received a secret gift, it was said to come from St. Nicholas. Because of his kindness, Nicholas was made a saint. And St. Nicholas is not only the saint of children, but he's also the saint of sailors. 
In Turkey, once a group of sailors were facing a raging storm, and suddenly St. Nicholas was standing on the deck. He raised his arms and ordered the seas to calm. The storm died away, and they were able to safely get into port. In the 16th century, his stories and traditions were still being followed throughout Europe. In the United Kingdom, he became Father Christmas and delivers presents to all their children. In France, he became known as Pierre Noel. In Germany, the Christ kind. In our country, the Dutch settlers took the old stories of St. Nicholas with them when they came to the United States. They called him Chris Kingle, and he became Cinder Claus, as we now say, Santa Claus. In Holland and in many other countries in Europe, they celebrate St. Nicholas Day on December 6th of each year. Children in Holland will leave clogs of shoes outside the door to be filled with presents. They also believe that if they leave some hay and carrots in their shoes for Cinder Claus's horse, they will be left some sweets. Christmas brings to each of us memories of old. I can remember one Christmas as a child lying in my bed and hearing a noise outside my bedroom. Through a crack in the door, I saw a flash. It was red. And in my mind and in my heart, I knew that I had seen Santa Claus that night. Years later, I was told it was my father in a red shirt, and I still don't believe it. <laughs> I know it was Santa Claus. <laughs> You're looking at someone who will be 59 years old this month who still believes. Today and throughout this season, when I close my eyes, I can hear Christmas music and evergreen in the air. I can still picture in mind my own three little girls awakening at 5 a.m. And listening to them giggle as they ran down the stairs to peek at the Christmas tree to see what Santa had left them. This morning, this Christmas morning, I know that my three daughters will have had the same experiences with their children. My favorite Christmas tradition in our family now is Christmas Eve, when Sharon and I traditionally have our full, whole family gather at our house for dinner. And we share dinner, we share stories, and we listen. We listen to the whispers of our grandchildren as they anticipate the arrival of Santa Claus coming tonight. The next day we visit their homes and our grandchildren will excitedly show us what Santa brought them this year. Watching through the eyes of my grandchildren brings me great joy. I know it does for many of you. This time of year also renews my closeness to the Creator that lives within me. And as I experience the happiness and the love that surrounds this season, I feel a deeper connection to the Spirit. I also experience a greater oneness with the universe that we are all part of. This time of year reminds me of the strong faith that children have. They do not question, they simply accept all is the truth. They don't worry about how Santa can deliver presents to all these places in one night. They just accept what is before them. And they do this without question. If an angel appeared to you as you tended your flock, would you blindly accept what you were told, leave your work and home, and travel to a stable to visit a newborn child? Would you follow a star in the sky as the three wise men did, knowing that the king of the Jews had been born? They did, and when they arrived, they presented him with gifts and bowed before him and worshipped him. The faith that they had and the faith that children have can teach all of us valuable lessons. Paul Solomon said, 
There is no greater teacher than he who lives within yourself. I hope each of you understand this and fully embrace these words that Paul spoke. As we leave our childhoods behind and become responsible adults, we lose that innocence. We lose our ability to simply accept and we begin to question everything that is around us as we get caught up in this world that we live in. It's not wrong. It's simply the way our world was designed by our Creator so that each of us can experience living and learning for the greater good of our soul and the greater good of the whole. The greater good is always with us each and every moment of our existence. Edgar Cayce said in his readings that each moment that a physical birth is experienced in the earth is an opportunity for the Christ entrance again. For as he choose to enter, so ye have entered. Think about these simple words. Each moment that a physical birth is experienced is an opportunity for the Christ entrance again. For as he chose to enter, so have ye entered. We are not different from the Christ, but rather a part of the Christ consciousness. What makes us believe that we are different is our perception of being separate from the Creator, rather than the truth that we are one with its spirit. All of us, as we enter into this life experience, were given an opportunity to grow and to understand who we truly are. Jesus said, we are gods, and what I have done, you can do also. The difficult part is embracing this truth as our minds and our egos struggle to understand this reality. We would all do well to listen to the Edgar Cayce reading. Then as ye given, so do you receive. As he is given, the love of the Father to the children of men is manifested in the spirit of Christmas. And the real strength, the real hope, the real contribution is that small voice within. Take a moment to reflect on what this means to you during this season of Christmas. Meditate, go within, and unwrap the gift that the Creator has given to each of us. Listen to the voice that you will hear, and believe that you are hearing the voice of the Creator. You are one, you are not separate, you are never left alone. Remember that Jesus came into this world to show us that we are all part of the Creator and to teach us what He has done, you can do also. For we are all gods. We are able to create the experience that we want to have. Each of us has created the experience we are having this morning. We came here to share as a family to be surrounded by people who love us. Spirit led Bruce to call me several months ago and invited me to speak today. You deciding to come today was not by chance. You created this experience to happen. The words I am speaking to the music we have shared have been carefully orchestrated for myself has allowed me an opportunity for growth as I've been able to reach out to you today and to reach out and create this message and allowing me to share this message with you. When I search within, I know that I hear that voice and I hear that voice inside myself and without a question, I know that it is the Creator. Each of you have that same voice within, within you. And as we have come together today, that voice, 
that spirit comes together as one. We are not separate from each other. Rather, we are one body working in harmony with the Creator and all of its masters. Master Jesus came into this world so we could learn more about ourselves by being the example and teaching through His experience. His experience is your experience. As you leave this fellowship today, allow yourselves to be free and to believe as a child. Remember when you yourself believed in the magical elf we called Santa. Create the world you want to be a part of. And on this Christmas morning when you awaken, open the beautiful gift that is within you. And remember that Master Jesus told us to enter the kingdom of heaven. We must be like children. Thank you.